4. Democratic pushback and gender justice in a new age of democracy. In the face of backlash against gender scholarship and activism and democratic backsliding, the pursuit of gender justice is as urgent as ever. As discussed in detail in this report, the feminist theory of democracy acknowledges the global nature of gender inequality and highlights the importance of international solidarity and collaboration. It seeks to challenge oppressive practices and policies within nations and across borders, recognizing that gender equality and gender justice are universal goals. Although access to justice through legal reforms guaranteeing the right to education or criminalizing sexual violence has admittedly empowered and protected vulnerable women, however, the effort is to move beyond the mere legal granting of rights or reinforcing of punitive notions of justice to achieve economic and political equality. The field of gender justice aims to make social institutions accountable for achieving social and political parity, Muko Padai, 2007, page 5. The role of rights cannot be underestimated in mitigating gendered vulnerability and discrimination. However, the law does not always guarantee justice. Kapoor, 2005, page 37. Current debates on gender justice seek to address numerous aspects, including philosophical discussions on agency, autonomy, rights, and capabilities, economic debates around access to and control over resources, deliberations on legal reforms and practice-related issues regarding access to justice, Getz, 2007, p. 27 ff, Muko Padai, 2007, page 1 as well as political discussions on substantive participation, representation, and citizenship. Varying interpretations regarding the role of governments, transnational organizations, and international civil society actors produce very different strategies for gender justice, such as empowering vulnerable people by enabling political participation or economic independence through the provision of microcredit or gender mainstreaming. Similarly, the nature of gender inequalities has been located in interconnected socio-political institutions such as the family, the community, the market, and the state. Therefore, understanding the ideological and cultural justifications for the subordination of vulnerable groups within each setting can help identify how unjust structures can be critically challenged, Dowen, 2011, page 11. The feminist concept of justice identifies and outlines how, historically, women and other marginalized genders and groups slash communities have been systematically disadvantaged and oppressed. Gender justice aims to challenge and dismantle the existing structures and systems perpetuating gender-based discrimination and oppression. It seeks to create a more equitable and inclusive society that values the rights and experiences of all individuals, regardless of their gender identity, and seeks to address and rectify these inequalities. As argued in this report, gender justice represents more than just gender equality. Instead, an intersectional approach helps strengthen our understanding of gender relations as relations of power and social force. Gender justice is not just about benefiting women. It recognizes that achieving gender equality is crucial for society's well-being and flourishing. It promotes social justice and the realization of the material and symbolic conditions for all individuals to access justice as members of, participants in, and represented in democratic processes. Current discussions on justice increasingly draw on the model of intersectionality. Considerations from this perspective seek to explain and show how different forms of discrimination overlap and intersect, producing uniquely vulnerable subject positions. Here, Power is not understood as having one source or origin. The various diverse forms of power interact and manifest themselves in context-specific ways. An intersectional approach exposes how equality is not just a matter of gender equality. It also includes other factors such as ethnicity, race, class, religion, and able-bodiedness, to name a few. This implies that women, or men, or trans and non-binary people, cannot be identified as a coherent or homogeneous group. Instead, gender runs across all social categories and produces different conceptions of justice. What is clear, despite the controversies, is that gender justice is about more than treating men and women equally. One challenge here is defining and understanding the complex manifestations of discrimination, exclusion, and violence, namely how economic, sexual, racial, and gender-based violence are intimately intertwined and intersect to generate particular entanglements of oppression, Dowen, 2011, page 11. 
Although feminist organizing is increasingly transnational and supranational, as in the case of the European Union, oppression based on ethnicity and class is still reproduced and maintained in institutional political discourses and practices that are country and region specific. For example, the inequalities between Eastern and Western Europe are instructive. The notion of shared interests or global sisterhood among women, regardless of class, race, religion, migration status, able-bodiedness, and nationality, has led to the advocacy of general solutions to many problems assumed to be universally applicable to all women. Transnational gender programs or national domestic policies often misrepresent marginalized and excluded women or otherwise invisibilize them, as argued by Roma feminism and feminist disability studies. To the extent that Western feminists have participated in these forms of universalizing political discourses and denied or hindered the possibility of specific women or minorities' access to gender justice, they have abetted, to some extent, the reinforcing of global inequalities in the struggle for justice. Post-colonial queer feminist politics and agendas attempt to formulate and enact counter-strategies that can effectively contest intersectional inequalities. In Western democracies, marginalized individuals such as migrants, ethnic minorities, and racialized people are expected to draw on the constitutional mechanisms of liberal nation-states to challenge their exclusion. The assumption is that this mechanism would strengthen the universal norms of democracy, human rights, and the rule of law. However, as has been shown, postcolonial, decolonial, queer, and feminist approaches outline the limits of this liberal approach, which promises a corrective attitude to problems of inequality and injustice. Without the outright rejection of democratic ideals of freedom, equality, justice, solidarity, and human rights, they highlight the implicit biases and flaws in these approaches. The attempt is to deploy the master's tools to dismantle the master's house, Lord, 1984, page 111, by deploying norms of women's human rights and gender justice. Foregrounding the epistemic and material obstacles for women and LGBTQI plus groups, the focus is on broader geopolitical structures and challenges threatening contemporary democracies in Eastern and Western Europe and beyond. In order to prevent and countervail the erosion of democracy, efforts are made to broaden democratic citizenship, participation, and representation so as to formulate alternative models of democracy. Particular attention is on subaltern subjects in Eastern Europe, ethnic minorities, migrants, refugees, and marginalized groups such as people with disabilities and trans people. Democratic education plays a crucial role both in encouraging privileged subjects located in the global north to engage responsibly with the periphery and in enabling subalterns and excluded groups to think of themselves as part of the public sphere and democratic interactions, as well as to enable them to access democratic infrastructure and make their interests count in parliamentary structures. It is equally important to examine specific democratic concepts and practices that shape our normative understanding of justice. As we have argued, feminist, democratic, and intersectional critical ideals of citizenship, participation, and representation can reshape and inform alternative concepts of democracy and justice. In the context of our discussion, gender justice can only be achieved in a new age of democracy through persistent questioning of its underlying assumptions. This implies that justice is a process of righting past wrongs and securing a just future by engendering democracy through diversifying and pluralizing the processes by which specific norms become hegemonic, Delwin, 2011, page 13. Normative ideals structure social, political, and cultural worlds discursively and materially through institutions such as courts or legislative bodies that are responsible for policymaking. As hegemonic gender norms allow certain practices and actions to be understandable or natural while stigmatizing, marginalizing, or rendering invisible and unintelligible those behaviors, relationships, and practices that deviate from the norm, it is imperative to contest the normative violence that accompanies our understanding of ideals of human rights, equality, freedom, emancipation, and democracy. As Judith Butler, 1999, page 23, argued, non-normative subjects and practices that fall outside the norms of recognition and, thus, the realm of legitimacy, are vulnerable to normative violence. Thus, in place of the universal understanding of the normative as a guideline for action, Butler foregrounds the link between violence, norms, and subject constitution, Mills, 2007, page 134. Norms enable and hinder survival through normative framing of lives worth living. 
In the context of discussions on women's human rights, a normative understanding of who qualifies as a legitimate subject of rights excludes subaltern women from claiming rights, as they are merely coded as objects of benevolence. If norms shape both the agency and vulnerability of the subject, then it becomes clear that hegemonic norms must be contested, Ibid, page 141. Women and minorities or marginalized groups have historically been excluded from the sphere of politics and economy, denied access to the public sphere, and secluded in the private sphere. Accordingly, feminist scholarship and activism challenge not only the norms that enable democratic recognition but also the conditions that produce and reproduce the misrecognition of women and LGBTQI plus groups as political agents. A critical contestation of hegemonic framework thereby results in a more inclusive politics of recognition and deliberation regarding the conditions of that recognition, Butler, 2009, page 139. We have outlined how norms of recognition determine what qualifies as unjust, what mechanisms and instruments are deemed appropriate and legitimized to judge injustice, who is heard, and who has the power to listen, Bowen, 2011, page 16. This invites us to critique hegemonic norms of recognition and examine how recognition is historically constituted and articulated. The goal here is not simply to reform norms to make them more inclusive but to explore how it might be feasible to enable new norms to transform practices of recognition, Butler, 2009, page 6. The pursuit of justice, especially gender justice, compels us to persistently engage with what is overlooked, excluded, erased, and silenced by institutions and policy. This requires a permanent process of revision, reinvention, and re-justification of the law in its effort to exercise justice. It is important to note that this by no means entails a rejection of norms of justice or democracy because of their intersectional bias. Instead, the challenge is how these norms can be negotiated to make them meaningful for a new age of democracy. It is imperative to consider how the perspectives and insights of marginalized subjects such as women and LGBTQI plus expand the boundaries of ideas of justice. Despite claims of tolerance and openness, current paradigms often hinder the emergence of alternative non-canonical perspectives that can contribute to the democratic pushback needed by the European Union to aid against the backsliding enforced by anti-feminists and anti-gender movements, parties, and policies. One touchstone for determining the legitimacy of collectively enforced norms is whether those subjected to the agreements agree and have a say in the decision-making and realization processes. Many of the feminist theories of democracy and intersectionality, which have been considered in this report, emphasize not only the reform of liberal democracy but further a radical transformation of its historically biased concepts and practices into alternative views of democracy. This new age of democracy is understood as a form of governance and a political regime informed by gender equality and gender justice. It is understood in terms of redistributive and transformative justice, politics of recognition, and representation. An important contribution of post-colonial and Eastern European feminists is to bring the question of representation into the discussion, whereby we must re-evaluate the criteria of what will or will not count as a plausible demand for justice. We must address the following questions. Who is authorized to speak for those on the receiving end of justice, and from what will that authority be drawn? Which voices will be heard by whom? Doan, 2011, pages 19 to 20. At the heart of the process of democratic pushback is the feminist contestation of the marginalization and exclusion of women, racialized people, ethnic minorities, people with disabilities, migrants, and LGBTQI plus groups from justice claims. As highlighted in our comparison of Eastern and Western European contexts, the pursuit of economic justice must be supplemented with social, cultural, and political empowerment, Spivak, 1993, page 63, and recognition. Gender justice is not just about organizing goods for the suffering classes, access to institutions, and formal equality before the laws, but also about enabling each member of society to exercise their rights and duties towards each other. It is the collective engagement with the ideals, norms, and institutional practices of democracy and equality that would guarantee dignity to all members of society. Herein lies the promise of a democracy to come. Summary of Findings Key Findings of the Feminist Diagnosis, Critique, and Transformation of Liberal Democracy 1. In the face of the backlash against gender equality sought by anti-feminists and anti-dash, Gender movements, parties, and policies, the European Union faces an erosion of democracy and democratic backsliding. 
2. Western and non-Western feminist scholarship and activism seek to challenge and transform political discriminatory and exclusionary structures and practices and promote gender equality and gender justice in democratic practices and processes. 3. Western and non-Western feminist theories of democracy encompass a range of approaches that highlight the gender dimensions of political power within democratic systems. 4. While feminist theories of democracy can vary in their specific emphasis and approaches, some central concepts feature prominently such as citizenship, participation, and representation. 5. A feminist theory of democracy seeks to empower women politically by making their membership, participation, and representation efficacious and promote their active engagement and influence in political processes. 6. Foregrounding gender equality recognizes that women have historically been marginalized and excluded from decision-making processes with the aim of challenging and transforming these power imbalances. It is not sufficient to have women in political positions, their presence should also lead to meaningful changes in policies, priorities, and decision-making processes that address women's concerns and interests. 7. Feminisms from the Global South challenge the reified notion of women as a group with shared experiences. They object to the universalization of the Western idea of state, society, and politics, highlighting local gender and racial power relations and dynamics. 8. Black, Roma, post- and decolonial feminist theories of democracy challenge and aim to transform liberal democracy in Europe by questioning its Eurocentric bias. 9. Gendering democracy means a substantive practice of democracy understood as one, a form of government that protects and enforces values such as pluralism, non-discrimination, tolerance, justice, solidarity, and equality. 2. A political regime that commits to pluralism. 10. Effective and extensive democratization is unattainable without substantial citizenship, participation, and representation. 11. Feminist contemporary analysis of democratic theory engages with an intersectional approach, transnational perspectives, political economic questions, planetary and environmental concerns, social reproduction and care ethics, and the challenges and possibilities presented by technology. 12. A feminist intersectional analysis of democracy studies how gender intersects with other social categories, such as race, ethnicity, class, migratory status, and disability, to produce specific forms of inequality and discrimination within democratic practices and processes. 13. Feminist approaches from both the global North and South emphasize the importance of expanding participation and inclusivity in democratic processes. They argue for a participatory democracy, which fosters the active engagement of marginalized groups and subaltern subjects in decision-making and policy formation, creating spaces for diverse voices to be heard and fostering a more inclusive and representative democratic grammar. 14. Critical feminist theories not only emphasize the reform of liberal democracy, but further a radical transformation of its historically biased concepts and practices into alternative views of democracy. The new age of democracy is understood as a form of government and a political regime informed by gender equality and gender justice, which implies redistributive and transformative justice in a politics of recognition and representation. Key findings of the feminist analysis of inequalities and justice from an intersectional and global perspective. 1. The differences in the historical development and political economy of the various countries of the EU must be considered when studying and comparing them. 2. To better understand inequality, it is imperative to focus on the co-constitution of multiple categories such as race, ethnicity, class, gender, sexuality, disability, migratory status, and religion. 3. Intersectionality as a traveling concept has made remarkable contributions to feminist scholarship and activism. It helps to understand the current challenges of transnational feminist scholarship and activism. 4. An intersectional approach to gender inequality focuses on gender-based discrimination, power relations, and the interconnected nature of different forms of oppression and discrimination, seeking to rectify them. 5. Intersectional theory acknowledges that individuals can experience multiple intersecting systems of oppression and privilege simultaneously and that these overlapping identities and experiences shape their lived realities. 
Six, intersectional politics significantly contributes to the analysis of and struggles against inequality. This framework helps to understand the complexities and contingencies that characterize the coexistence of domination and resistance. Seven, for intersectionality theory, the goal is to rectify historical wrongs and empower disenfranchised groups whose experiences have been previously disregarded by single-issue politics and policy approaches. Eight, intersectionality in post-colonial studies identify and examine the flaws and shortcomings that structure the asymmetry and non-reciprocity between feminisms from the global north and south and outline the challenges of transnational feminist alliance building. Nine, intersectionality in feminist disability studies foreground the importance of people's experiences for scholarship and how these insights help challenge oppressive hegemonic discourses and structures. The bridging of theory and practice functions as an essential political tool that helps reclaim alternative forms of identity and personhood that are not framed by ableist norms. 10. Intersectionality in Roma feminism reveal the deep inequities between Western and Eastern societies. They explain how the intersection of gender, ethnicity, class, nationality, and migratory status impacts women's vulnerability and contributes to the ethnicization of gender-based violence, thereby reinforcing racist and patriarchal structures in transnational contexts. 11. Intersectional analysis and politics contribute to engendering democracy and spaces of democratic participation by identifying the mechanisms and relations that produce specific forms of inequality and discrimination within democratic practices and processes. 12. Feminist approaches to democracy acknowledge that although the role of rights cannot be underestimated when it comes to mitigating gendered vulnerability and discrimination, law does not always guarantee justice. Contemporary feminists challenge existing legal systems, advocating for transformative justice approaches that address gender inequality and violence and ensure accountability and gender justice. 13. Normative arguments for advancing gender justice are confronted with backlash and backsliding that beset a new age of democracy. 14. Feminist, democratic critical ideals of citizenship, participation, and representation. Reshape and inform alternative concepts of justice by reimagining democracy intersectionally.